Let us as the sun. Let us burn with eternity until the day is done. Let us perspire solar flares. Let us be the center of our own universe. Let us share our light with many moons. Let us be so beautiful that their eyes hurt to look at us. Let us be as humble as the night. Let us as the sun. Let us be no one and everyone. Let us have the sun. Let it brown our hands. Let us imbibe its glory. Let our kisses be photosynthesis and provide food for our souls. Let our thoughts evaporate from our heads. Let us always be missed behind a cumulus masquerade. Let us not have the capacity to hide who we are and darken the world with shade. Let us be worshiped throughout time. Let us rise every morning and set every night, knowing that the day is done. Please, let us ask the sun. Well, um, I saw this on Monday night, and I just had to come back and see it again. You all are just wonderful. You make me think, you make me laugh, you make me cry, your words are alive, and I'm just so proud of all of you. So thank you again. Uh, I think we have the answer to Olivia's question of this is the heart of Detroit. I'm the founding director of Inside Out Literary Arts Project and we serve uh, young people in the Detroit Public Schools with creative writing instruction, poetry, poets in the schools, publication of their work, many opportunities to perform and be celebrated and to develop as writers. It has been a wonderful year for Inside Out. We conclude this, ser this year with service to 27 Detroit Public Schools. And Five of those schools are brand new to us. How the, the program works is that we have writers who are professional or emerging, as they say sometimes, writers who are actively pursuing their craft as a major part of their lives. And they come to us, or we recruit them, and send them into the classrooms, and they go in once a week for, a, um, for three sessions per school per week. Throughout the school year, they meet with the same students, so they become a real engaged part of these students' lives. Hello, sailors. Hello, Mr. Roberts. How are you today? Good. That's good. You know, it's a cold day out on the sea today. Have you looked out the window yet? My name is Robert Fanning. I'm the managing director for Inside Out Literary Arts Project. We're going to get our boat out of the dock and we're going to go out to sea. So, what's the first thing we need to do? We need to put up the sail. So, who do I need to help me put up the sail? This is my first time working with uh, lower elementary students. I've worked with middle school, high school, and upper elementary school students. I especially wanted to work with second and third graders this year um, to challenge myself. heavy today. Come on, what's your reaction? Ooh, Ooh it's big. I arranged the residency this year with a, a nautical theme. Um, I don't even like going out on, on boats myself. I'm a little bit terrified of the water, but, um, but bringing this sort of pretend setting, this imaginary setting to the students has been wonderful. They, they really do, I know they believe we're on a boat and, and when we look out the windows of the classroom they're seeing dolphins and they make me see them too. Turn the wheel a little bit this way. Whoa. Oh my gosh, okay I'll try and get us level, I'll get us level. We're gonna turn, turn the, sh the wheel the other way, let's go this way. Whoa. Oh my goodness, whoa, don't fall off your chairs. Why doesn't everybody stand up for a minute and look out at the sea? Tell me what you see out there. What do you see out on the water today? Does anybody Gold. see anything? Water. What do you see? Shark. A dolphin? Shark. What do you see out there? Sharks. Sharks? Uh-oh. And um, bringing that, the world of the imagination into the classroom, really the, the walls disappear, the walls of the classroom, the walls of their lives, the things that people tell them they can't do. They, anything's possible when you're out on an imaginary ocean, when you're out on, as I call it, the sea of imagination. Uh, anything is possible. So, when 
I went down into the treasure of my heart, this is the treasure box I found inside my heart. Can you, can you believe that this was inside my heart? No. Yes. Yes. Remember, on, imagina on the sea of imagination, everything is possible, right? Okay. Yes, this was inside my heart. I'm going to share with you some of the things I found inside the treasure of my heart. Wasn't there a shark? There's the smell of autumn leaves. Wait, wait. Oh, there's a memory of my brother and I playing football on an autumn day. And it's, it's, a, it's a day I'll never forget. It's a day I'll never forget. Wait. Ah, and there's my grandmother. And she's sitting with my mother and they're laughing. Let's see what other things are inside this treasure box. Ah, there's the sky. There's the sky. When I was a child your age, I used to play around in the yard, and I remember looking up at the sky a lot. And there it is, inside the treasure box. What do you think you would see inside your treasure box of memory? Who, who else has something in their treasure heart that they want to share? Yeah. Um, a special day or a time that co costs, that is way more, way more valuable than money. Um, just sitting out on the grass at night looking at the stars with my cousin. Whoa! Now that is something money can't buy. What's especially exciting is seeing, in the course of one residency in a year, seeing how the students really develop as writers in that year. Um, students who, who are teachers tell us they couldn't get any words out of barely on paper or verbally, you know, that start to really blossom. Uh, it's, it's amazing to see what happens over the course of a year. It's called the treasure heart. In my treasure heart, my family sits at the dinner table. Everyone is laughing. In my treasure heart, spring flowers bloom. The summer shines. In my treasure heart, autumn leaves fall. The silver snow flies. In my treasure heart, my hope shines like one million stars. In my treasure heart, I am walking with those I love into a beautiful forest. Okay, so what Mr. Robert did was, I looked inside my treasure heart and I imagined what I could see there. All the things in my life that I'm so thankful for, all the memories and all the special things that I see every day that really make me feel pretty great to be alive. Because on Gratitude Island, that's what we're thinking about. Now, who wants to write one of these yourselves? You guys want to write one? Sky by so, what I see in my heart. I see me and my cousin looking at the stars. I see a beautiful garden. There is a nice lady sitting with me. I see myself drawing a pretty picture of a house. I see me and my friends at school. I see me and my big brother walking to the park. I see my I see me and my sister walking to school. I wish I could see my family down south. I could see my family walking to the dinner table. Okay, snaps. I'm Sherry L. R. Taylor. I'm a senior writer with the Inside Out Literary Arts Program. We see it. Give us a picture in our head. That's what we're looking for. That's image. We're looking for images in poetry. I've been with Inside Out now for just over two years, and um, I've worked in high schools uh, primarily. Um, I did Crosman Alternative High School, um, Redford High School, and this year I'm part of the Voices Project uh, here at Osborne and um, also at Detroit Academy for Young Women. Mix of color, a rainbow of people, stacked box, stores, collage, phenomenal pictures, shapes, oval, square, triangle, pink, green, red, like Skittles. Chrysler, GM, Ford, Creation, Metal, engine, water, gears, lights, bumpers, windows, tires, fast motion. Motown, music, rap, hip hop, Hip hop, beat, bop, 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 singing voices, harmony, instruments, like life, 
stories. Towers of windows, brick flowers, shadows, brown, gray, blue, pink, silver, red, green, and black. We use poetry in order to deepen the student's knowledge of biology. So it's challenging as a writer, um, it's challenging as a, as a poet to come up with ways to do that, but it's been really, really rewarding because we see the students catch on. We used um, a love poem to um, illustrate and deepen knowledge of symbiosis, of the symbiotic relationship. We are able to send people who are living and breathing words into the classroom to share what they do um, with the students. I mean, we have this very unique position. We don't have to be like a teacher, you know? And, and I'd say that to them. I don't have to do the things that all of your teachers have to do. I don't have to make sure that you spell everything right or that your grammar is perfect or any of those other things that your teachers have to do because you need those things. What I get to do is come in here as a writer and talk to you about writing and what it's done for me and what it can do for you and the reason that it's important. And when they start grasping those, those ideas, um, the, the depth that comes from them and the, the depth that they open up and trust us with is amazing. My name is Nandi Comer and I am the Community Projects Coordinator for Inside Out Literary Arts Project. And my job entails, um, I make sure that Inside Out has a connection with the community outside of the DPS schools that we service. Our goal was to take students from two specific parts of the city, Northeast Detroit and Southwest Detroit, and have work weekly workshops, three days a week, where the students were not only learning from professional writers, but also learning from professional artists who have dedicated themselves to public art. And when I said public art, we didn't just go to like downtown and go see the fifths and the spirit of Detroit, we went to go see the Heidelberg Project and we talked to Tyree Knight. We also worked with some students on the Southwest side who worked with expressions, and we also worked with uh, Charles Cavan when we did the, uh, we talked about graffiti. They also learned the, the powerful tool of what writing can do for them. Some of them are like, I'm poets when they came in the class. They're like, you don't have to tell me what poetry is. I'm writing already. And some students are like, I've never really written a poem before. And so we had all walks of life come into the classroom. And that what came out of it is Spray, our publication that um, is now is actually in the back for sale. Um, in the ninth grade, I met Terry Blackhawk, and she was my English teacher. And while we were doing all the English assignments, she would tell us, okay, so now, aside from, we're not going to write an essay about this, we're actually going to write a poem, or we're going to look through the window, or we're going to listen to just the silence in the room. And I thought she was crazy when I first met her. But um, I began to really enjoy my English class. I think that had I not had her as a ninth grade English teacher, I would have never gone into English at all. It really grew out of my classroom experience because when I was teaching creative writing and poetry it seemed to make sense to bring people into the classroom who were also creative writers and poets and I found that when I brought those extraordinary individuals into my classroom it changed things very dramatically. I remember that there were poets always in the classroom. There were, I remember Pete Marcus coming in and uh, just Different writers, different. We had, we had uh, playwrights, we had screenwriters, screenplay writers, we had fiction writers. It was just, we always had someone coming in to visit us and to talk to us about our writing. The program started with um, publication being like a key component of it, and we just believe that, uh, a th the in giving students the authority and I like that play on words author authority of being published authors and we believe that it raises the bar for them because they have to work harder to make their work publishable it's not something you just toss off you have to revise and craft and and uh, so there's a challenge in being published but there's also this tremendous validation of the students themselves. So when we, you see a young person holding their book up in front of our gala audience of three or four hundred, hundred people, it's, it's, an, it's a momentous thing. I also want to thank a long distance friend, 
and this is kind of unusual, but all of the books that you see tonight were printed in Manitoba, Canada. And these arrived on time from a very long distance because we have some real love for Detroit out there on the prairie. And in fact, I talked to our printer today and he said he was very proudly wearing a Made in Detroit t-shirt, just in honor of, of our program. There are kids that come up to me with notebooks full of poetry and they're like, I've been writing since I was, we, since I knew how to write a, an A. And, and the thing for them is that it's, it takes it even further once they've already discovered that they have a voice, but they have a voice that can be listened to and that matters and that should be published. And I think that is what, what is really important about Inside Out. The students are seeing that someone cares about their work, but then they're seeing this professionally bound book that's just beautiful with students artwork and other people they know in that book that they can take home and they can keep as like, a document, a living document of, of the experience that they've had with this writer. And in asking a student to write a poem, it allows them the opportunity to describe their experience, to write about their perspective and their life. Increasingly, students don't have that opportunity in school. I barely did uh, many years ago when I was their age. But now, increasingly, with so much standardized testing, um, with their, their curriculum is pretty intense, for, for even for second graders. Um, they don't necessarily have the option to sing, to dance, to write, um, with, art, with art kind of in a lot of ways being removed from the school. Um, it, it allows them the chance to have a voice and, and to recognize that their voice matters, that what they have to say about their experience and the world is extremely important not just to them, but to their peers. Uh, when they stand up and recite what they've written, the kid in the back of the class who barely even knows them uh, suddenly bonds with them. That's the, that's the transformative um, magic of art. It connects us. I've watched kids go from being completely uh, introverted, um, from being withdrawn from the classroom, to coming upon that one poem where they really put it on the page and then they'll share it with the room. And when that happens, it's, I can't even, I can't even, there's no, I'm, words are what I do and I don't have words for what happens. They open, they blossom. I mean, they, they absolutely open in a way that's like nothing else you've ever seen. And the beautiful thing that goes on in the classroom when that happens is that there's acceptance. They accept and affirm each other because they, they get it, you know? And when one of them is able to open up, then they're all able to open up. The, there's a certain kind of just aha that happens when they show you a poem and go, is this right? And you tell them, no, 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 that's not, that's not the right question. You need to ask me, you know, will you please read what I wrote? Because I, it, what I wrote is that important that I think other people need to hear it. And I think that's the power of Inside Out, is that all these students that are told that that their voices don't matter, especially in their classroom where the only voice that matters is the right answer. You have kids who probably aren't doing well in any topic at all, in any classroom at all, and they're coming up with these poems that are just like amazing and just beautiful. And their, their teachers and their parents are surprised because they never thought that the student could come up with something so powerful because they forgot that they were asking the wrong question. Institutionalized ignorance, materialistic reverence, misguided adolescence structured by sexual essence, artificial jubilance, crazed professional assistance, get lifted, haze of purple, slave to the gurgle, gargle tender, tis hard to swallow, learn to follow, oh yes follow, no leaders, just drone, so hollow, all souls stand alone, decisions righteous are never condoned, drunk from the love jones, eyes of envy always wrong, green pupils ravaged, savage alive that does damage to esteem, deemed minute, struggles in the pursuit to the level while sampling the devil's cuisine, which seems to be a necessity. Eyes comfortable, ears comfortable with cacophony, no time to think. Thoughts lost, no perceptions perceived, no opinions conceived. 
body tea, semen open to receive by females so immature and naive. Give me, allocate me monetary prosperity for the antonym causes anguish within. So then comes thievery, bruises, marinate the skin so deep. So much street pharmacy lies lost in a labyrinth of deceit, oppression, or what a horror disease. Eyes mindfolded by twisted reality. The insignificant is seen to be important, no questioning. While truth transforms to guile, no radicals, only conformity. All uniforms stick to policy, infatuated with propaganda. Oh God, I can't stand them. Robots brainwashed by three W's. The media that spews misconstrues truth. All facts disguised and not to be seen. Welcome to the wasteland that is being a team. I hope that we'll have enough stabilized funding so that we can count on our program continuing year after year. That's the biggest challenge in any nonprofit. And the arts are such um, a struggling part of the economy these days. So we really have to work very hard to make sure that we can sustain ourselves. I'd also like to say that the one thing about the arts that provides such inspiration in the classroom is that it combines, the arts combine intellect and emotion. And I think so much of students' engagement in the classroom has to do with engaging them personally. And poetry gives them that personal connection to whatever the subject matter. Right now we're teaching biology through poetry. And so that combination of intellect and personal feeling, emotion, connection is, uh, is a powerful one. My wish for Inside Out is that we are, we're no longer the, these crazy writers trying to come into people's classrooms and introduce students to the word. Um, that we become almost part of the recipe of what a student needs in order to be successful. And that there isn't even a question about youth expression. That there is a that people start to value it, and they identify Inside Out with that. I think that Inside Out has the capacity to work in so many ways and so many venues. That our only issue is making sure that we do it in a very um, conscious way, and that we don't mishandle what we um, what we're doing with the youth. But in in the future, I see Inside Out being something that is not only not only its own entity but something that is being replicated across the country i think it's it's vital i think our program isn't an add-on it's not something that is you know uh, an an extra thing that the kids might enjoy i think it's absolutely vital i think having the students have the opportunity to proclaim their lives in words is essential and should be a part as is our is our vision uh, should be a part of every child's educational experience. I hope for the future for this project would be that we could be in every school in the country. Um, you know, this is a this is a project that I think is um, vital because it has to do not only with literature and literacy and reading and all of those you know vital things, but also with self discovery and affirmation and finding voice and discovering your passion, figuring out who you are in this life. Um, that's what writing does for me. Um, that's what it's done for me in my life. That's what I see it do for my students. And I, I can't think of a single classroom in this country that couldn't benefit for that, you know? I mean, what could we, what could we fix? <laughs> what could be better, you know, next, you know, with the next generation that they could take over if they could all really come into what's important, you know, and I feel like that's why we write, that's why we do this thing, to figure out what's important and communicate, communicate that to each other, you know, so I think it should be everywhere, that would be my wish, my dream, that we were in every classroom.